Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome back to TerraTech with me, Lathrix. And of course, welcome to a brand new update which has added something truly amazing to the game, along with a whole host of other smaller things, and has also made these weapons perhaps now my all-time favourite weapon. From honestly, a bit of an underwhelming start when they were first added, they are now truly amazing. So, let's just get straight into it, let's look at all the new additions, and why these weapons are now just so awesome. So here we are with a standard enemy turret. Isn't it adorable? It has its shields up and everything. And because of a bug at the moment, for some reason it won't fight me. Although if you change its allegiance, it will then start working. Anyway, once we fire these weapons, of them being incredibly loud, yep, they are now proper lasers, not projectiles. And they go through shields. Shields do not protect at all versus this weapon. And it's pinpoint accurate. So as you can tell, if the enemy doesn't have enough regular armor around its core, it's going to be utterly devastated by these weapons. The same goes for these as well, the larger variants, the cyber disc. So yeah, am I going to be using these a lot? Yes. Yes, I am. And before we get into some of the new items, including the Sky Anchor, I will just say that now, finally, Better Future is available in the campaign itself. So I will be either starting a new campaign or continuing the old campaign to see all the new missions and see just how difficult it will be to get these lovely, lovely new items. But yeah, these are so loud as well in comparison to everything else. There we are, and will we eventually get to the core? It seems to be healing at the moment. There we go. So still not that strong, so enough healing will outdo these, but if it's not protected well enough, these will tear through things. So then, onwards to the next item. So it seems like as things die, it gets in the way of the laser and they can clearly heal better. Which causes all sorts of problems, but yeah, absolutely love the laser. Now then, if we can go to somewhere a little bit safer, let's have a look at one of the most anticipated items I think I've ever seen. This here, the Better Future Sky Anchor. And it just so happens this little drone has one attached. There we go, we are now anchored. Now, unlike the regular anchor, you are able to move away from the point of anchoring, but only a little bit. As you can see, it's sort of a tether. And the further you get away, the stronger the pull, until eventually you can't quite get much further out, and you end up kind of spinning around. Yep, there we go, and we're being pulled back, sort of bouncing around. And of course, what this allows you to do is build floating bases. Now, you can get higher than this using the anti-grav system, though I've noticed, similar to when you go too far out like this, the sky anchor will start pulling back, so if you go too high up, you end up slowly descending, and because you have the anti-grav on, you'll just descend forever until you hit the floor. So definitely hovering bases are for the best, and of course, it will make for some really, really awesome defense turrets, which I am so looking forward to making. In fact, that's probably going to be one of the first things we do. Now, before the sunlight goes away completely, as you can see, you can do all of the usual things you can do whilst anchored, whilst attached to a sky anchor. This will be utterly phenomenal. Seriously floating bases everywhere. And once again, if you do use the anti-grav, you can go much higher than this. So, the next item is just this, the simple Better Future Battery, which... Honestly looks really nice. Like, I'm going to want to put these on the outside of the craft. They look that nice. And then probably end up with everything exploding. But still, let's ignore that little fact. There we are, fully anti-graved. So now we can go as high up as we wish. In fact, I wonder how high up you can go and still anchor. So, perfectly able to anchor from there. And as you can see already, much, much higher up. Still able... Not able. Okay, so that was as high as we could go. Now, I'm now realising I have no way to get back down. Well, that was a dumb, dumb move, wasn't it? Come on, back down. There we go. And then slowly descending. Let's get back up and let's try to stabilise ourselves. By the power of air brakes, we are almost completely stable. 
Well, close enough. It's like a very long time for us to become unstable, so let's continue from here then. Let us quickly remove the weapons. So I have some more space to work on, and so we'll move on to the next item. We now have the Better Future Fabricator and the Better Future Scrapper. Now, the Scrapper does exactly what you might think it will do. It will simply scrap any Better Future item, giving you the raw resource. And, of course, the Fabricator will do the same. It will give you all of the items you need using the resources. And it seems like some of the stuff is fairly cheap, honestly. Of course, some of the stuff is incredibly expensive, as you very well might expect, but the basic stuff is still basic stuff. So, all the different grades are now available, so we can see just how we're going to be leveling up. When it comes to weapons, actually, that laser is grade 1, so definitely going to be working on those very, very quickly. Which is very, very nice indeed. But we could look at this for way too long. Either way, the fabricator looks like this. It looks really, really nice and futuristic, similar to the scrapper. So that's all nice and well then. So we can make some proper floating bases, which can use materials, which is lovely. I'm definitely going to try and make ba um, anti-grav bases, which are large enough for other techs to try and land on them. Again, the problem is trying to stay at a certain altitude. Again, the air brakes really, really help out with that. Almost stable, if I just feather the controls for a second. There we go. Close enough, anyway. And then, of course, to stay airborne for a very long time, we can always add some solar panels, which would look way better if it was still daytime. Now, one thing I would very much like to check is as follows. Apparently, the anchor itself can be attacked on the ground. Oh, God, this thing is not stable. Let us get over to the defense turrets, please, so we can test them out. Okay, go down. And let's anchor up over here. First of all, let's make them into an ally. If we, oh, wait, no, that one's already killed, wasn't it? Of course it was. Um, do any of you still have weapons? Okay, here we go. Yep, they can attack the anchor on the floor. So, will that destroy the anchor here, or will it just de-anchor us? Well, it can definitely take a lot of damage. Okay, it's broke, so what happens? Have I lost? No, it only breaks what was actually attached. That's interesting. So, I'm assuming then it still works. If we go off somewhere else... Yep, it still works just fine. Okay. And there we go. Getting some more battery power. Lovely. So then, let's have a look-see at some more of the new items. So then, to begin with, we, well, to continue with, we also have, there we are, the Eco Engine. So this is a much larger version of the regular Anti-Grav. Pretty much the same sort of design, just scaled upwards, which is absolutely lovely. It does drain more power for each block that it has an effect on, though, so... It's efficient space-wise, but not efficient power-wise. I would only use this if I'm also going to make it anchorable. I think I will make a lot of my hovers anchorable anyway, because this block is quite easy to place on the underside of pretty much any hover I've built before, and being able to anchor is always a good thing. Just try to sneak in a couple of these solar panels, and all is good. In fact, we should test that out on my recent UFO build. Now, here's one thing. Will it actually help us with landing? Wow, no, it really pulls you in way too harshly. Yeah, it's not really particularly great on this build. Let's try it out on an actual hover, shall we? But still, just proof that it fits anywhere where I've placed a normal anchor before. Oh, God, this... Yep, no. I will beat you, anchor! Nope, no, I won't. Help. That looks so weird, that bit there broken. Here we are, we have one of our old combat hovers. Let's replace these sections here with solar panels. There we are. So this way it should be able to anchor a lot easier than the old anchor system. There we go, we drop the anchor, the solar panels come up, and then we have the ability to charge back up at any time. That is a lot easier than the regular anchors. The only thing I'd say so far is I would love if the anchors could also set you to stay at a certain height if you have enough power. For instance, with the anti-grav, 
so they always try to keep you at a certain level, though I imagine there would be a lot of issues with that as well, so I understand why they are as they are, but that would be nice as well. Now, let's go into the creative mode and let's test just how well this deals with terrain. Because if it deals very well with terrain, it means anchoring on hills and such will be so, so much easier. The amount of times I've been trying to anchor on uneven terrain and it just doesn't work because you need to make sure all of your tech isn't touching the sides. Well, this might make life a lot easier. Let's go and find a good hill. Like over there, for instance. This was made before a few changes were made, and um, yeah, you can certainly tell with the controls. But still, it controls well enough, it's just very, very heavy. Especially now I've removed the middle hover. Come on. Let's see if we can anchor all the way up this hill. Yep. Yep. And now let's go over. And yep, pretty much anywhere. Lovely. Oh no, look, it's struggling there. Okay, so it needs to be at least flat enough for this section. Of course, that's still much smaller than the other anchors because you'd be locked to the floor as well. Well, I guess it is about the same size as the smaller anchors, but once again, you get the idea it also locks your tech so low that it needs a flat area for the tech itself. So, not so much hills, but still a lot easier. Oh, uh, although... It locked there, which definitely wouldn't have worked with the old anchor, purely because of the tech itself. Okay. So... Definitely a lot easier, just not everywhere. Got ya. Always make sure to build the entire thing first. I've just learned a lesson. Excellent. There we are. Let's stay there. So, there are still more items to look at, though. We now have, as well, the new payload terminal, which, of course, will also work if we're on the sky anchor. Which means we can also look at the prices of stuff as well. So I'm assuming that some of the lighter weapons are going to be... Whoa! Incredibly expensive! Yep, 30000 for that. So, close to the same price then as the Hawkeye Cruise Missile, which is arguably the other most powerful weapon in the game. Although, with these ignoring shields, they're definitely going to be close. Although, these will always have the longer range, and yeah, I still think the Cruise Missile is the king of weapons, but this is coming close. I also just really like missiles, so yeah, it is what it is. There we are. Using the air rigs as they're meant to be used. Of course, you can make this significantly bigger, as you can imagine, and if you use the anti-grav, you could set it at a much, much higher altitude. There's plenty of stuff to do with this, and I will be building an airbase incredibly soon, you can be certain about that. Definitely one of my favourites of all the new items. Now, I'm not sure if this is new with this particular update, but it's something I haven't covered before, and this is the Better Future Medium Hover. Now, it makes this a lot more different to the other hovers, although it does act pretty much in the same way. It's the connection points. As you can see, there's two connection points on the same block, which means these are perfect for corners. Can't really show them off too much right now, but that's pretty much it. They do the exact same job as the regular hover, but with more connection point options, which of course connect really weirdly. Which of course, though, will allow for completely different building styles, once again, with Better Future being really, really good at just making any shape you want. Now, there is one item which I think is a very, very interesting addition, and I'm not quite sure when I'm going to use this. It's here. The Better Future Gravity Magnifier Engine. This curious block is the exact opposite of an anti-gravity engine. As the name suggests, it increases the effects of gravity on all blocks under its influence. It can be used to temporarily change the centre of gravity on a tech. Just like an anti-gravity engine, it requires power to function. So, I'm not quite sure when I would use this honestly, but certainly interesting, if nothing else. I wonder how many of these it would take to completely... Oh, there we go, we're getting close to the ground. I was about to say, cancel out. Our hovers. 
I guess it would give you some serious traction, if nothing else. Yep, yeah, there we are, almost on the ground now. And, oddly enough, getting quite a bit of lag there. I wonder if that's because we're stacking them up like that. Probably should use them differently to that. But yeah. I like that the option is there, I just don't quite know when I'm going to use that. Definitely one of the more fringe blocks in terms of use, but I'm sure some madman will get complete use out of this and just make the ultimate tech. Now, of course, unlike regular bases, moving around hover bases is actually pretty easy. Yet yeah, these lasers are just so, so powerful. Can we get to the core? Come on. There we are. Goodbye. Right. Did we just kill that thing's core without detonating it? I don't think I've ever done that before. That's just weird. Now we're just going for random blocks, and there we go. There's the explosion we all know and love. Lovely. Yep, I really want to make a build with these lasers now. It's just... It's so accurate and quick. Not quite enough damage to counter the healing, though. Oh, no, there he goes. One item gone. Still pretty darn powerful, though. There we go. Now those are actually symmetrical. Either way, though, I think I've covered pretty much everything. And of course, this was just a quick look at all the new items added. I will be going into much more detail once I start building with them. And the laser and the sky anchor are definitely the first two I'm most likely going to look at. It's definitely the most likely. Yep, that about sums it up. So... Yep, really happy with this, and now that Better Future is in the campaign, I'm not quite sure what I want to do. Do I want to go ahead and make a new campaign and rush to use them? You need level 4 GSO before you gain access to Better Future, or do I just go back into the old campaign where I'm already that level and instantly check out the new missions? Tell me what you feel like in the comments below. I'm really not sure about either. I kind of want to start again with different rules. For instance, this time maybe not crafting anything and only relying on killing enemies and focusing solely on that. More nomadic, with a floating base, for instance. Or I could just go back and instantly check out all the new stuff, because I am so, so tempted just to see how they've implemented it into the campaign. So please tell me your opinions in the comments below. And with that, thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed today's video, then of course, likes, favourites, shares, comments, all that good stuff, helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that TerraTech is a series you wish to see continued in the future. Far more detailed videos very soon. Thank you, and goodbye.